So for this one, and for a lot of these problems, we're going to be given this parent function, this absolute value function, and some new curve g, or g of x, that we need to figure out the equation for. So we know that we're not shifting it. So we're not going to be adding or subtracting anything to the parent function because the vertex didn't move. It just became a different shape. So we need to figure out what we scaled it by. What did we multiply by on the outside? And notice that it's skinnier than the parent function. So this is going to be the first case where the number we're multiplying by is bigger than 1. But we have to figure out exactly how much bigger. And to do that, you want to find a very distinct clear point on this function g of x. And that's going to be at some type of corner, like maybe there or there. And we can compare it to this parent function. So notice the parent function for that same x value would give you a y value of 3. But on the g curve, it gives you a y value of 4. So you want to think, what did you have to multiply the parent function by to get this new curve? So essentially, compared to that parent function, we are at a y value of 3, and we multiplied it by some number so that it transforms to this new curve. We can call a the scaling factor, or that number we're going to multiply by out in front. And when we did multiply our parent function by that new number a, whatever it is, it now gave a y value 4 for that same x value. So we can say that this is now equal to 4. And so we can figure out what a is equal to by just solving for it, divide everything by 3. And so a is 4 thirds. So that is our scaling factor. So g of x would be 4 thirds times the absolute value of x. And this should make sense because if you plug in 3, then the absolute value of 3 is 3. And you'd have 3 divided by 3, so those would cancel. And then you would just get g of 3 equal to 4 which is what you'd expect, because when you plug in 3 to g, you do get 4. And likewise, if you plug in negative 3, the absolute value makes it positive, the 3's cancel, and you again get 4. And you could check this possibly with other points. You can't always do that. It depends on the problem. But notice it does have distinct points up here. And when you plug in 6 to this new g of x, let's write that down. If we do g of 6... This would be 4 thirds times the absolute value of 6, which is just 6. So you get 4 thirds times 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and then times 4 brings us to 8. But that's exactly what we have. So there are ways to check this. You just got to look at points on the curve and see if they match up with what you think is the equation. So let's keep going. Do a few more of these. So in this one, the graph of y equals the absolute value of x, our parent function, is reflected across the x-axis and then scaled vertically by a factor of 1 fourth. So the reflection will have to multiply by a negative number, and we're scaling it, so we're not going to be adding or subtracting. Remember, scaling is just multiplication. So we're going to be multiplying our parent function by this factor of 1 fourth. But again, it's, it has to be reflected, so we'll have to have that negative sign. So it would be minus for the reflection. And then the scale factor is 1 fourth, so we're multiplying by 1 fourth. And all of this is compared to our parent function. So this right here will be our equation, which looks to be choice letter C. And we can keep going. Here we have another graph. And again, with these graphs, you want to find a distinct point on your new curve. So in this case, let's say at 3, it goes through at negative 2 compared to our parent function when it was at 3. And so to find that scaling factor, we know that when x is 3, y was 3 on our parent function. But on our new curve, it's negative 2. So we had to multiply that by some, some scaling factor. We'll call it a. And when we did that, we would get a y value of negative 2. So we can solve for a, divide both sides by 3, and it looks like our scaling factor would be minus 2 thirds. So that 
just based on the graph or the picture makes somewhat sense because it is reflected, so we should have that negative, and it's a little bit wider than our parent function. So that makes sense because this number is less than one, or two thirds, we should say, is less than one. And we could write our equation for g now. So g of x is minus two thirds times the absolute value of x. But we want to check this and make sure that it's correct. So find another clean point, let's say right there. And if we plug in six, we should get back negative four is our answer if this worked. So we have minus two thirds times the absolute value of six, which should just be minus two times six over three, which simplifies to two. And you have minus two times two, which is negative four. So when we checked it, it did work. We got back the Y value we expected, which means we can feel very confident that this is the right answer. And let's do one more. So in this one, G is a scaled version of our parent function. And again, we're just gonna look for those distinct points. It looks like we have one right here and here if we wanna use it. And so for G of X, when X is one, in our parent function, it had a y value of 1. So we start at 1, but then to get to our new curve, this g, we had to multiply by some scaling factor, which we can call a. And when we did that, we got a y value of 3. So we can solve for a, but 1 times anything is itself. So a is equal to 3, that scaling factor, which means that g of x is just 3 times the absolute value of x. And let's check it with one more point. So maybe this point right here, since we know that if we plug in two, we should get back a y value of six on this curve G. So G of two, we have three times the absolute value of two, but that's just two. So three times two is six, but that's what we expected. Since we knew on this curve, if we plug in two, you get a y value of six. So since this worked, we can feel very confident that G of X is just three times the absolute value of X.